Hello, I'm here at Embedded World 2025 on the DigiKey booth and I'm pleased to be joined again by Jason and Rob. So Jason is the founder of BeagleBoard and or BeagleBone, should I say, sorry, and uh, Robert, Applications Engineer at DigiKey. So it's been about a year since we last spoke, so it's a pleasure to have you back. How have you both been? It's great to see you again, Paige. I've been wonderful. I uh, just had a great year um, with BeagleBoard and um, Got new stuff to show, so I'm excited to be back again. Fantastic. And it's very good to be back somewhere where it's spring and nice and warm. Yes, yeah. I know, I know. So it's, <laughs> yeah, very excited about the days getting longer and yeah. more time outside. Yeah, you always forget in winter what summer feels like, so it's going to be nice. <laughs> so tell us what you've you've brought with you today. So Pocket Beagle has had an upgrade. Um, yes. Tell us about the upgrades and the new features. So I think last time we were talking about the Beagle Y AI, which is in the Raspberry Pi form factor. Yep. Um, but we're still giving love to the Mint 10 form factor, <laughs> right? And this is the, the Smalls um, version of um, a Pocket Beagle 2, right? So an updated version of the original Pocket Beagle. Um, we just have to give it a whole lot more horsepower, yep. right? A whole lot more processing power. Um, we've done some things to make it, things a little bit easier for developers. Um, we were using a, a Type-C um, USB connections instead of the micro. Um, and we included a, 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 a three-pin debug header that's compatible with the, 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 the Pi Debug Pro. Mm -hmm. um, and we ship it with headers soldered on, right? So no longer do you have to solder on headers in order to connect it up to boards. And it works with the existing line of Pocket Beagle capes, the, the Game Pup, the Tech Lab, and the Grove cape. Yep, so as you can see, the, the, the Tech Lab cape there. Um, and it's available from, from DigiKey now. Um, the first boards that, that we did, they shipped with a dual core um, A53 running at one gigahertz um, with lots of PRU pins, so we still had the PRUs. Um, and there's an upgrade in the, um, the microcontroller on there as well, so it was an M3. It wasn't particularly usable on the original um, Pocket Beagle, um, but now we have the M4 with um, support in Zephyr, um, um, as well as Zephyr support for the A53. So um, there's you know a lot more capability for programming that um, that M4, um, and the um, the we, we're doing same same price. We're upgrading it now already. If you haven't even heard about it. We're already upgrading it, <laughs> right? Yeah, and, special announcement <laughs> for just today. <laughs> Um, from dual, dual core A53s at 1 gigahertz to quad core A53s running at 1.4 gigahertz. Same price. Same price and adding the GPU back in, mm -hmm. right? So it's also got an imagination GPU yeah. um, in there. All for the same low price yeah. of under 30 bucks. And all, all these upgrades, is, does this come from feedback from your users in the community? A, somewhat, right? So um, yeah, this is really... Um, the love of, of, of Texas Instruments, right? Our, our, our supplier, they, they've um, um, they'd like to see people using the full featured device. Um, so they've just been really good at, at supporting us so that we can to get that quad core. But but absolutely, it's been from the community that's asked, begged us for an updated version of the Pocket Beagle for a long time, and now we're finally delivering that. How long has it been since you launched the original Pocket Beagle? Uh, was that 2016, 2017? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it was 2017. It was so. when Octavo uh, came out with their SIP. Yeah, so we're, this is um, a non-SIP version, so we're fully discreet um, on this version of the board. Mm -hmm. we're, we're directly using the, the, the chips uh, packaged from, from TI and, and from, from Kingston um, with, the, with the, uh, a separate PMIC. We've also added a TI microcontroller onto this board. So um, in, in the past, we used the integrated ADD and the AM335. Um, but the AM62 doesn't include um, an integrated A2D. So we've added an MSPM0 on here um, that's a, a very effective, very high quality um, analog digital converter and giving it the IO pins um, as well. So you have IO pins and you can reprogram the MSPM0. Mm -hmm. um, but it's acting like our, our E squared um, e prom um, and it's acting as our A2D. Um, with standard I squared C drivers, okay. right? So, yep. but of course you can reprogram it. Yeah, the full, the full, big upgrade. The full SDK for that is available too. So, customers can update it, make more devices over it. It's on the I squared C bus. So you can do a lot of fun things. Mm -hmm. and, and what key markets and applications are you looking to target with this? Um, well, where can you use a computer? Uh, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it, it, it's the situation, right? And we don't have it, it doesn't have the, the the HDMI built in, right? 
Um, so like getting to the display means you're using like something like a spy display most likely. Yeah. Um, but it's very flexible on its embedded interfaces. USB comes across the header, you got spy, you've got UART, you got CAN, um, I squared C, right? So kind of all the you know, PWM, A to D, D to A. So you gotta get all the standard stuff. I say D to A, I mean PWM, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so anywhere you would make an embedded Linux computer. And so our, our goal for this is really to take people from being very novice computer users to being very skilled embedded computer developers, mm -hmm. right? So um, of course, everything we do is open hardware. Um, so they can get the design materials, they can look at how everything's put together at the, the lowest levels. Uh, but we're trying to start from very, very basic levels, right? So we're gonna start with, um, well, initially we're releasing our tutorials with Python. Yep. Um, so we've got um, tech lab oriented tutorials, um, first with Python. Um, but we're gonna even give people a lower entry option with, with microblocks. Um, so we're not just supporting Linux on here, we're also supporting Zephyr. Um, and the Arduino layer for, on Zephyr allows us to easily put microblocks on there and MicroPython. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have tutorials going from, from microblocks to MicroPython to Python. And then we're developing tutorials on Rust. Yep. Right? So first user space Rust that looks very much like the user space Python code, moving all the way into developing uh, kernel drivers in Rust. Um, with the with the tech lab kit, so you got, you know, learning about how to do it with I squared C, Spy, UART, um, kind of all the embedded buses, yeah. um, taking you all the way from a novice programmer to really understanding developing with embedded Linux. And these tutorials, they're starting to come out now. That's right. We, we, we're developing them in the open. Yep. Right. So if you look at um, docs.beagleboard.org, docs.beagleboard.org, <laughs> and and uh, open beagle um, openbeagle.org slash BeagleBoard slash VSX dash examples um, is where a lot of the, the tutorials are being developed right now. Okay. Um, it's VSX because we ship with Visual Studio Code, um, code server running on the board. So when you plug the board into your computer, you just open up your web browser, type in the magic IP address as your URL bar, and Visual Studio Code comes up. So once you have Visual Studio Code, you can of course use that as your programming environment um, for the board. You can even program the micro SD card using the BB Imager, okay. um, which we've rewritten in Rust now. Um, so we have a Rust based Imager that will actually bootload the boards and program the micro SD for you with the latest images. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's, it's kind of full beginning to end um, tutorials for, for even the novice. Um, and like, we're, we're really putting this focus on moving towards Rust. Um, to handle more of the embedded developer needs, but we want to have that entry point of uh, microblocks, MicroPython, and Python um, to kind of help people go along the way. And do you want to? You've you've got a webinar on the 13th of May. I we we yeah. do we do, and we, that that should really be the, the the big launch of the these tutorials, right? Okay. So, uh, and they'll be you know full of slideware as well as um, example code and disk images. Um, and lab work um, to, to run through those. Okay. And, and we'll give an introduction to those in a DigiKey webinar um, so that people can discover all about them. And um, you know, perhaps go through those tutorials themselves or you give them to other people. Yeah, um, where's the best place for them to register for that webinar? Is it DigiKey website? Is that where they need to go? Yep. Is it available yet to register? <laughs> I don't know if it's available to register. It'll okay. be very soon. Okay. So we'll have a link here. <laughs> <laughs> Insert later. Yeah. The, the goal is there'll be a lot of education materials around the board. And basically, um, we did some trainings many years ago, Jason, with the ELA group. The goal is to really use a lot what they did and yeah. just update it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, um, the Embedded Apprentice Linux Engineer Program um, was something that the Linux Foundation um, put together as kind of a almost like a teaser training, um, but it was actually very uh, effective at getting people introduced. Um, you know, it's a, a few days course, a few days sets of courses, introducing people to different subsystems within Linux, um, getting them using the user space side and then going all the way into writing the, the kernel drivers. Mm -hmm. So we're leveraging a lot of the open source work that's been done um, to, to, to but, but updating it and making it um, newer and fresher mm -hmm. um, for you know higher performance. Um, Pocket Eagle Two. 
What's the thing that excites both of you the most about this upgrade to the Pocket Beagle? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, it's so powered by USB. <laughs> it's, you don't need external power. You can plug it in any computer, essentially. Um, getting as much of the compatibility with the add-on hardware because um, we have such a, a, a rich ecosystem of people already using the, the, the Pocket Beagle. Um, anywhere from uh, you know teaching materials, obviously super super important. Yeah. Um, but people have built um, drones like and, and, and like stuff with the RG Pilot, um, where they've got the, the drone add-ons. We've got uh, uh, the Bella, um, which is a, an audio platform. Um, I'm super excited to see them get you know these performance upgrades. Um, you know, all, so much more that they can do with real-time audio synthesis yeah, yeah. Um, and really, really easy to use kits. If you've never seen Bella.io, um, by all means, check it out. Um, it's super easy to use, but it's super, super powerful, right? All this stuff that leverages these real-time microcontrollers to give really, really, really low latency yeah. um, to applications. Um, you know, we worked with um, Culp Lights um, so that they're, they're um, you, you and I have to Daniel a fair bit, um, so that, that they have um, systems for doing, you know, if you've ever seen the incredible Christmas displays of people timing things all through their, their homes, right? Um, Culp Lights is a, is a great supplier for that, and this is a big upgrade for them, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting the, the Pocket Beagle 2. Um, with this, what they have for real-time light, lighting control. Yeah, yeah. So it's 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 that ecosystem of people that that comes from having that compatibility at the header level, having those real-time microcontrollers that gets me so excited. Right, they get to jump start really quick yeah. and move forward, and they've been waiting for this a long time. Yeah, yeah. So have you too, I think. <laughs> You're very yeah. excited about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it. <laughs> very. Fantastic. Is there anything else you want to add? And so the biggest thing we were talking about that is. GPIO compatibility. Our goal was to be as close to the original Pocket Beagle as possible. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the same pins, all the yeah. same features. Because we want to make sure that we didn't piss off anyone from previous. <laughs> no, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons it took so long. <laughs> we had to do yeah, a couple absolutely. boards first, figure out what these pins could actually do. So the you know the Beagle plane was kind of a prototype for this in a way. Well, it's worth the wait to get it yeah. to you know Gotta where it, it is rights. now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Get, get a sub thirty dollar board, right? Yeah. So I think this is where we really start. Um, hitting, hitting the masses, yeah. um, um, and and really kind of reinvigorating that uh, the, the the Beagle community and the Mint Ten survival <laughs> computing. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Well, one more question for each of you then before we go. A more general one, which is, you know, walking around Embedded World this week. There's a lot of talk about AI and mm -hmm. edge computing, but I'm interested what each of you think is going to be the biggest trend over the next 12 months. Uh, you know, one of the obvious things we see is, is um, you know, people uh, training their, you know, there's a, everybody, like, there's a large language models are doing a lot around code development, yeah. right? But, but, but getting those models trained with domain-specific knowledge, um, I think, is something really important. That actually really directly feeds into our generation of high-quality tutorials yeah. to help people answer their questions about how to build embedded systems. And so, we, we've, we've, we've got multiple engagements with people working on training large language models around our open documentation and our tutorials to try yeah. to give people better answers about how to build um, embedded systems and to do better quality code generation. Um, of course, you know, embed edge, edge AI, of course, is, is um, you know, very, very Im important. Um, you know, the data collection side and doing cloud AI, I think is uh, like where I, um, I think we'll still see more failure analysis done in the cloud. Yeah. Um, even though um, we, 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 we want that real-time um, fault tolerance detection. Yeah. And there's certainly a platform this, like this has more than enough computing power um, to do um, edge uh, like fault detection or like, like motor um, like analysis, right? Or um, other types of, of system failures, right? It has more than enough processing power. But it's about the data, yeah. right? And and so that's why I think you'll see more of these types of things gathering the data, putting in the cloud, acting as the gateway and, or the data collection mechanism, and see um, you know that preventive maintenance stuff like become a little bit less of a promise and a little bit more of a delivery. Mm -hmm. um, but if you got trained models, 
You can run them here too. Fantastic. <laughs> I guess, for, yeah, I guess for my side, we're going to see a big push of more low power devices. Okay. We're going to yeah. get to the point where a lot of the AI is very expensive and very power hungry. And that was been like the last couple of years. And I think people are starting to push back and trying to find more power optimized routes. And whether they're using existing models or simplifying things. Yeah. Because it you can't keep on burning as much as we do. No, definitely. Well, it's certainly going to be uh, some interesting times ahead. And thank you very much for bringing the Pocket Beagle upgrade for us to, to see. It's always a pleasure speaking with both of you. Great chatting with you again, yeah. guys. Fantastic. And don't forget about the webinar on May 13th. More details to follow soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.